Hey everybody, what do you think of my beard now? I'm liking it. Ha ha ha. So here's the thing. This is actually lichen. A lot of people call this moss. It's other than wise known as old man's beard. And it comes in a variety of different types. And it is, a, it's an interesting thing to come across in, in the woods and especially old growth forests. You'll find some beautiful displays where it's just hanging down like these uh, long flowing hair or a beard. So <clears throat> hanging off the old trees naturally it would be called old man's beard. It's not a moss, it's actually a lichen. And I'm here to talk about lichens for a minute. What is a lichen you might ask? A lichen is a symbiotic relationship between two organisms. So we have algae which can live in a variety of different areas. Uh, usually needs it, it always needs moisture obviously so you know it lives in environments where it can gather the moisture it needs <clears throat> well we also have um, a fungus fungi which can live in their own areas as well but can't produce chlorophyll so here's the interesting thing is that mushrooms need a symbiotic relationship or a parasitic relationship in order to uh, get their sugars through photosynthesis and so what happens is a lichen is actually a, a, a symbiotic relationship between these two organisms, which is either a fungus and a cyanobacteria or a fungus and an algae. And a lot more research has been done recently, and in the last couple of years there was a new discovery that, in fact, it wasn't just uh, the... There was actually a second fungus. There's two different types of these long-flowing uh, beard-like mosses out here. Not this one, a different kind. <coughs> and one was yellow and one was dark brown. And when they did genetic tests, they were identical. So they said, what's the difference? So they did more research and more research and found out that indeed there was a fungus, another, a secondary fungus in this other, in this other one. So there was two fungi and an algae. Well, also other research uh, recently has found that the missing link was a uh, yeast. So, in fact, some of these have two fungi, a yeast molecule, which is doing something completely different of its own need, which may have something to do with uh, the chemical differences, which I'll get into in a minute. Now, I'm not an expert on this. I'm just here to share with with you what I know and what I've learned. I'm I'm a hell of a researcher, so I just really get into things. And I was into lichen a while back, and <clears throat> I was fascinated with them because they are basically the precursors to this planet, if you will, uh, to life on this planet. If if what they do is they can they can land on rocks and they can develop roots and help break down those rocks through the fungi, but also you know be able to gather sunlight and use a very small amount of water in order to photosynthesize and eat sugars. And when they break down the rocks, it becomes soil, and you know the rest is history. So I have a few of different ones that I wanted to share with you because I'm, I'm fascinated with them. When I went out hiking the other day, I, uh, I went out in this desert area by Mount Adams and I came across a few different interesting types of moss I'd never seen and so I grabbed a few. And interestingly enough, I didn't intend to make this video today, but just yesterday I took two different types of lichen and put them in some resin. I was going to make little jewelry out of them because I didn't want to destroy them, so I carefully uh, put super glue on them then encased them in resin and I don't think you'll be able to see them very well but these ones over here with the red tops yeah those are called uh, Cladonia uh, chrysatella or British soldiers because of the red top now they may be a different strain that's very similar but generally that's what they're they're the Cladonia uh, you know classification well I also believe that this is Cladonia that it closely resembles what they call reindeer moss, which grows in huge clumps over in Europe. And it's actually the, one of the main food sources for caribou. And, uh, you know, reindeer eat it up like there's no tomorrow. So um, you've got to wonder, what does it have in it? It's got to have a lot of nutrients, but it also ha probably has a lot of protective, you know, molecules in it, terpenes, sesquiterpenes. Um, <clears throat> so reindeer moss is a staple for caribou. Cladonia chrysotella, um, uh, there is research being done on this, these little red ones, which says that uh, 
it may be anti-tumor, anti-cancer, and a variety of other things. So you have also have these little uh, clump uh, clump ones, as well as moss growing on here. So this is regular moss here, but this is a lichen. And so this is kind of what the British soldiers look when they're growing, but these ones don't have tops on them because the red tops are gone. I only got a few of those, and uh, so I, what I do is I put these in my, my jewelry that I'm making, the resin jewelry, because I love the, the way they look, the fractals, but I also I really got to thinking about the medicinal qualities of it, and I'm like, okay, so here I am, you know, I've been herbalist for years, I, I just love the medicinal power of herbs, and then once I got into mushrooms, and the medicinal power of, you know, I, I take, uh, you know, reishi extracts, uh, two different kinds, an alcohol and a, and a water extract, and uh, a lion's mane, and I'm like, well, why don't, why, why am I not researching these these algae. See, people are taking, you know, green foods and algaes and whatnot. Blue-green algae was a thing for a while. Um, you know, you can get some nutrition from it, but also you wonder if you've got algae, which is generally, you know, nutritious, then you have, um, you know, fungus, which has medicinal properties. These things can stave off, you know, all different types of weather, predators, you know, insects, and other molds, which, yes, you can have a mold that invades a mold, which invades a mushroom, which invades a mushroom, and it goes on and on. I mean, there's a parasite or a virus or a bacteria for everything, and some of these uh, small, slow-growing ones can live forever. What they have is the, uh, the, the little leaf-like ones, oh, well, I won't go through the details, but whenever you see kind of the scaly ones that grow out like leaves, those are called folios. There's also the fruticose, which is where they have like a top that fruits. Uh, then there's lepros, filamentos. I have a couple of notes over there. I was trying to remember what they all are, but um, there's also uh, squamulose, I think, which is like a pebble-like, you know, one. And uh, there are actually stories now that I just remembered this that of uh, mountain goats, I believe, that go up to the rocks and seek out these very specific type of lichen and they chew it off the rocks and I've heard that it has like narcotic like effects and gets them all fucked up so it's very possible um, that humans might find some you know perhaps narcotic properties in these too but I, I would say uh, here's the interesting thing about uh, the, the the old man's beard it's called usnea and um, it contains usnic acid and usnic acid they found is third in line as the best uh, the best medicine for tuberculosis, third after the you know top two drugs that are used. Why don't you hear about this? Probably because it isn't patented, but um, you know the, you can't patent a lichen. But anyhow, uh, it has antibiotic and antimicrobial activity that they've found. It also stimulates the immune system and is an inhibitor of HIV, the HIV virus, which is pretty interesting in itself. Um, it's also a very useful against Steph. Uh, staph and strep throat, um, various infections like MRSA have even been, you know, thought to be useful. It's just, it's crazy. It's crazy that how many different uses that these things might have when you never hear about it. So um, there's one that grows out in the desert in various areas. You'll see a bright yellow. Now those are the ones that might be toxic to humans, in, in, especially in high doses. Um, wolf lichen is very, is yellow when it grows in these little clumps. I, I, you see it all the time on like dead branches out in the desert. <clears throat> that one um, contains a uh, poison in it called vulpinic acid, and vulpinic acid is uh, actually what they would do as nasty as it sounds, because uh, the name is Lotharia vulpina, uh, just like Lotharia lethal. Um, you they would take it and they would grind it up and then they would mix it with broken ground up glass and then they would put it in meat and feed it to the wolves, throw it out to the wolves and the wolves would uh, eat it and they would generally die the next day so it could be the glass of course increasing the absorption but the fact is that it is found to have a lot of toxic compounds and uh, so be careful if you're ever going to use one of these for medicine or whatnot. So anyhow, I've, uh, I'm almost out of information here. I've got about as much down as I can. Um, uh, lichens have been found to absorb radiation very well. And in fact, they were a study was done where they were sent out to space and uh, bombarded with radiation from various angles uh, for a long time. I don't remember the details, but you can look it up. And uh, when it returned, it was still viable. And you know, 
I guess that shouldn't surprise us, but I've heard a lot about uh, spores being, you know, perhaps the, the seeds in space, you know, fungus. Pe some people don't realize this, but fungi were here before, uh, before plants, and they were some of the first organisms on Earth. And so they believe that mushrooms may have existed that were up to, you know, 10 feet, 20 feet high at one time. And especially when the atmosphere is different. And that does make sense because they grow quickly, efficiently, and they do what they need to do. And the spores can float in the wind. And fungi are amazing. <clears throat> I mean, if you haven't, if you're not already obsessed with mushrooms and mycelium, then I, I urge you to look more into that part. Because you know, in the 1800s, when they came up with the word symbiotic relationship, the, the original term, from what I understand, was used to describe the relationship between these fungi and these uh, algae, specifically in lichen. And so that term symbiosis was used originally with lichen because you could see it directly. Here they are living together. Here's the interesting thing, when you pull them apart, sometimes they can't live alone very well, but sometimes they do and they'll just live alone waiting. If you put them back together, um, it has to be just the right conditions and then they will reconjoin, if you will. And it's fascinating, these, you know, these, uh, these two, three, well, three or four, up to three or four, you know, different beings, you know, exist as one. But it's funny because we don't, we're, people, anybody who's surprised about that, you know, doesn't realize that that's what we are too as humans. That the bacteria in our bodies, the way that our bodies interact because of our gut bacteria, um, which outnumber our natural bacteria and our natural, or our natural uh, cells, you know. And uh, that interact also viruses can change the way you act. For example, some viruses will force you to, or rather not force you to, but cause you to uh, seek out more more uh, social situations. So right before a person gets sick, they found that a person tends to be more social and want to be around other people. Is this the intelligence of the virus? Well, you might not think so, but there are viruses that do those things. Like, for example, it, you know, I think, uh, well, I won't get into bacteria and virus intelligence, but it's a pretty fascinating subject, too. And there's no reason to believe that fungi aren't in a similar regard, you know, intelligent in their own way, and that they can, that they know which plants and which, you know, <laughs> nature's intelligent. It just has a way of working together, you know, because symbiosis in that sense, you know, is so obvious, but a lot of science, uh, science doubted for years that there was any symbiosis within nature, that it was always parasitic, or it was always, you know, f for the benefit of one but not the other. And in many cases, this has been proven untrue, and uh, <clears throat> especially with many lichens, in which, yes, the fungus does penetrate the cells of these, uh, you know, algae and it does take their sugars, but it, it in return gives a nice protective home, a shelter for them to live in and to spread to other places. So, hope you've learned something, and uh, as usual, you know, leave a comment. I always like to hear what you have to say. Um, all my info is in the description. There's a Patreon link in there. There's also a link to my other channel, and there's a link to, well, there will be if I haven't put it in there, uh, I have to copy and paste the links because I upload from my phone now. I'm still in the process of getting a new camera. I'd like to do that. So uh, I just got to get off, get around to like finding one I like, I guess. <laughs> I'll talk to you all there. You have a wonderful day. And uh, yeah, go get you some liking.